All right, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. And today we're talking about the Ruger LCR, specifically in caliber 9x19, and even more specifically how the Ruger LCR snub nose revolver in caliber 9x19 stacks up against Smith & Wesson snub nose revolvers in caliber 38 Special. Now, there's some interesting features about this revolver. First, you'll notice it's the double action only hammerless model. There are some versions of the LCR that have an exposed hammer, but according to the sources I've read in caliber 9x19, the hammerless model is the only one available. Also, this is supposed to be light. Well, compared to the Smith & Wesson air weights, it's pretty close. But compared to something like this Model 36 with its all-steel construction, the LCR is definitely significantly lighter. Which brings up the question, what does LCR stand for? There seems to be some differences of opinion on that. Well, I read the manual that came with the revolver and I couldn't find any reference to it, so day before yesterday I called Ruger and according to the Ruger representative I talked to, and I waited while she looked it up, LCR stands for Lightweight Compact Revolver. Now another feature about this gun is its double acting trigger pull design. With a revolver like this one, as you pull the trigger, you're rotating the cylinder and compressing the hammer spring. Well, the more it becomes compressed, the more pressure it takes to depress the trigger, and so the trigger pull gets harder and harder until it goes off. This is something called trigger stacking. And the design of the Ruger is supposed to give it a lighter trigger pull and a more consistent trigger pull to alleviate trigger stacking. Does it work? It's definitely a lighter trigger pull, but if it's any more consistent, I can't tell. And the design of this is intended that the average shooter can shoot this revolver more accurately than they can revolvers like those. And we'll put that to the test. Now another interesting thing is that on a revolver like this one that shoots what would be considered traditional revolver calibers, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, 44 Special, 44 Magnum, all of those are rimmed casings, so the ejector pushes out the empties with the rim. But on a revolver like this one that shoots what would be typically considered auto-loading cartridges, 9x19 or 45 ACP, those rounds have recessed rims, and so the ejector can't work in that way. So the LCR is loaded with the use of moon clips, and a moon clip is just a thin piece of metal that holds those recessed rims, five of them in this case and it can act as a de facto speed loader. And there are some advantages and disadvantages with traditional speed loaders compared to moon clips, and hopefully we'll shed a little bit of light on that. But the real thing I want to focus on is, in a snub nose revolver, and all of the snub noses I have, both Smith & Wesson and Ruger's, these all have one and seven eighths inch barrel, how does 9x19 compare with 38 Special in terms of performance? And that's what I really want to focus on. And I want to start with showing you a close-up of what the two cartridges look like. On your left is the 38 Special, and on your right is the 9x19. Now, in terms of diameter, they are 357 and 355, so almost identical. But you can see that the 38 is a much longer casing. You may have heard me say that you can't judge the power of a cartridge by its size. The comparison of these two is the archetypical example of that. Comparing the power of 38 Special and 9x19 can be simple and axiomatic. 9x19 is more powerful, but the comparison is also a lot more complex than that, and demonstrating it can be tedious, so please bear with me. Now, I've got ammunition that will make it as fair as I can make it. That's Remington Golden Saber 38 Special Plus P 125 grain jacket at hollow point versus Remington Golden Saber 9x19 Plus P 124 grain jacket at hollow point. One grain difference in projectile weight I think we can live with. But as a basis of comparison, I want to chronograph these ammunitions using platforms that I would consider more traditional for these calibers, namely for 38 Special, the Smith & Wesson Model 15 with a 4-inch barrel, and for 9x19, a Beretta 92FS with its 4 three quarter inch barrel, which is a little more, but remember on the autoloader that measurement includes the chamber and the revolver, it does not. So let's chronograph these two ammunitions through these platforms and then see how that compares to our snub nose revolvers. And we'll start with our 9mm. 
1134. 1170. 1143. 1154. And 1150. Now let's see how that compares to the 38 Special. And now the 38 Special Golden Sabres. One thousand eight. Nine ninety five. One thousand four. One thousand one. And nine eighty three. Let's go crunch the numbers. Now this comes with the caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and barometric pressure can affect chronograph results. But I crunched the numbers and what I came up with was for the 38 Special a mean velocity of 998 feet per second. And for the 9x19 we got 1150. That's 152 feet per second more. That's a lot more. Now that does not mean that the 38 Special is ineffective and it does not necessarily mean that the 9mm is tremendously more effective, but it does mean that it is significantly more powerful. Now that we have that as a baseline, let's take the same ammunition and go back to the chronograph with our 1 and 7 8 inch barrel snub nose revolvers and see how these compare. And we'll start with the 9mm. One thousand twenty eight. One thousand fifty five. One thousand eighty seven. One thousand forty eight. And one thousand thirty eight. Now let's see how that compares to the 38. And now the 38 Special. 845. 871. 862. 869, 859. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and interesting results. With our full-size handguns, we got a velocity of 998 versus 1,150. That's a plus of 152 feet per second. In our short-barreled handguns, we lost some velocity, as was expected. But what we got was with the 38 Special a mean of 862 versus the 9mm a mean of 1051. So in our 38s, when going to the shorter barrel, we lost 136 feet per second, but with the 9mm, we only lost 99 feet per second. So a net result of the 9mm being ahead by 189 feet per second. That's a lot more. However, as usual, it comes with some caveats and yabbits. First, the question why do you get less velocity out of a shorter barrel? Well, to be as concise as I can, when your firing pin strikes your primer, igniting your propellant, pressure starts to build up, and that pressure forces the bullet down the barrel. As the bullet travels down the barrel, pressure continues to build until the bullet leaves the muzzle. If you have a longer barreled handgun, you have more time for more pressure to build, therefore more velocity. So the longer barrel you have, the greater velocity you'll get. Now as your barrel gets longer and longer you see diminishing returns and if your barrel is too long it can actually retard your velocity. But in typical handgun length barrels the greater the barrel length the greater the velocity and that's one of the reasons why you see handguns with six, eight, even ten inch barrels. There's also the matter of when you see someone carrying a snub nose 38 for concealed carry purposes most of the time people are using plus P ammunition. 
as where with 9mm, although plus P ammo exists, its use is not as common. Even in a full size or compact auto loader and your snub nose revolver, you're going to see people using standard pressure 9mm probably more often than plus P. And although plus P in 38 is a pretty good product, not all 9mm plus P ammo is created equal. So, we'll leave our long barreled handguns out of this, just use our snub nose revolvers, and we'll go back to the chronograph and try this test again with a different type of ammo. This time we'll compare Sig Sauer Elite Performance 38 Special Plus P 125 grain jacketed hollow point to Sig Sauer Elite Performance 9x19 Standard Pressure 124 grain jacketed hollow point. Again, one grain difference in bullet weight we can live with. And let's see what kind of results we get from this ammo. And with our Sig Sauer Elite Performance ammunition, we'll start with our 9mm. One thousand one hundred and fifty nine, eleven sixty five, eleven fifty four, eleven twenty seven, and eleven ninety three. Now let's see how that compares to the thirty eight special. And now the 38 Special. 792. 759. 767. 718. 746. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well I crunched the numbers and got some very interesting results. Now with our Remington Golden Sabre ammunition with 38 Special out of the snub nose revolver we got a velocity of 862 and with the 9mm we got 1051, 189 feet per second more. But with the Sig Sauer Elite Performance ammunition with the 38 Special Plus P I got a mean velocity of 756. That is so much less than I expected that off camera I shot another five shot straightening down a mean velocity of 761, five feet per second more. But even using the higher measurement, with the nine millimeter ammunition, and remember this is standard pressure, not plus P, I got a mean velocity of 1,159. That's 398 feet per second more. Do I even need to say it? That's a lot more. But the interesting question is, if this is plus P and this is standard pressure, why in our snub nose revolver is this still giving us 108 feet per second more than this is? Well, the conclusion that many people will jump to is that Remington makes poor quality ammunition. The real answer is quite a bit more complex than that. However, to explain it requires a tedious trip down memory lane, so please bear with me. And for all those people who say they want to hear the long version, be careful what you ask for. According to the sources I read, 38 Special was introduced somewhere between 1899 and 1902. According to the sources I read, 9mm was introduced sometime between 1901 and 1907. Sources don't always agree with each other, and contrary to popular belief, I was not around at the time, so I can't tell you from memory. However, circa 1900 was a transitional period between black powder and smokeless powder. And in 1902, even though smokeless powder cartridges existed, 38 Special was introduced as a black powder cartridge. That's why the case capacity is so much. With the less powerful black powder, it takes more of it to get the same job done. Well, by contrast, 9mm was introduced originally as a smokeless powder cartridge, so you have less case capacity and more power. Well, when 38 Special made the transition to being a smokeless powder cartridge, ammunition was still for the most part loaded down to the chamber pressures and performance that the black powder cartridges had been. Eventually we saw a more powerful 38 special ammunition and it had designations like high speed which gave you about 50 feet per second more velocity and according to the sources I read the plus P designation as we know it today was added in 1974. Plus P meaning added pressure and it was just a greater powder charge that gave you more pressure and more performance. 
generally speaking, all other things being equal, when you shot it out of a 4-inch barrel revolver, you got about 100 feet per second more velocity. But at that time, Plus P ammunition was manufactured with the idea that it would be used by security personnel or police personnel, the great majority of which were carrying 38 special revolvers with more or less a 4-inch barrel. But as we know, the shorter barrel does not give you as efficient of a powder burn. And so with that plus P ammunition of the time, what you typically get is in a revolver like this, with standard pressure you'd get a certain level of performance, with plus P you'd get a greater level of performance. With the shorter barrel revolver, with standard pressure you'd get a certain level of performance, and with plus P you'd get the exact same performance, because it didn't have enough barrel to burn the greater powder charge. In the 1980s, when I was shooting plus P ammunition out of a snub nose revolver, I saw that even though it was plus P, a lot of times I did not get hollow point expansion. It wouldn't burn efficiently out of the shorter barrel. But as the 1980s became the 1990s, you saw a transition away from revolvers to auto loaders for a lot of security personnel, police officers, and citizens. And so although 38 Special did not become obsolete, it became a cartridge that when most people were carrying it, it was for concealed carry and in a snub nose revolver. And eventually the ammunition manufacturers revamped plus P ammunition so that the powder charge both in amount and configuration would give you a more efficient burn out of the shorter barrel. And so when you shoot today's plus P ammunition out of short barreled revolvers, you usually do get good hollow point expansion. Now, by contrast, originally, 9mm ammunition was manufactured with the idea that you'd shoot it out of an autoloader with a 4, 5, 6 inch barrel. Today, 9mm ammunition and 9mm plus P ammunition is still manufactured for the most part with the mindset that you're going to shoot it out of a 4, 5, 6 inch barrel autoloader, not a revolver with a 1 and 7 8 inch barrel which loses velocity not only because of its short barrel, but because the gas lost in the gap between the cylinder and the barrel. And so, when you put 9mm ammunition into a short barrel revolver, you can get some inconsistent performance based on how that ammunition was manufactured. And that's why you can sometimes see standard pressure can give you greater performance than plus P in a short barrel revolver. Now, there's a couple other things that go with that. One, the question, is the LCR rated for plus P ammunition? And in the same phone call to Ruger, I was told that the LCR is rated for plus P ammunition up to a 124 grain bullet. There's also the matter that modern plus P 38 special ammunition is designed to give you good performance, good balance between penetration and hollow point expansion in short barrel revolvers. Modern 9mm ammunition is designed with the idea it will give you a good balance between penetration and hollow point expansion in auto loaders with 3, 4, 5 inch barrels. So even though we see these 9mm rounds have a lot more velocity than these 38 special rounds when fired from our snub nose, they were designed to give performance at higher velocities. Are we going to see satisfactory hollow point expansion when fired out of our snub nose revolver? Let's see if we can put that to the test. This is the meat target. And for those who haven't seen it, it's leather jacket skin followed by pork steak pectorals, pork ribs, a watermelon to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. And I'll shoot from seven yards with the Ruger LCR, loaded with the Sig Sauer Elite Performance 9x19, 124 grain jacket at hollow point. And let's see what kind of results we get. Well, we thrashed our pork steak pectoral, did a lot of damage to the ribs on the front of the target and where the bullets hit the ribs, shattered them. Extensive damage to our watermelon lung tissue. And the bullets penetrated completely through the ribs on the back of the target and where they hit a rib, broke it. And all of the projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Let me show you a close-up of them. One of the projectiles was lost, so I only have three of them, but you can see that the expansion is good and consistent. 
And now I'll shoot the LCR from 7 yards with our Remington Golden Sabre 9x19 plus P124 grain jacket at hollow point. And in previous demonstrations, this has given good performance when fired from a full-length autoloader barrel. Let's see what this does from our snub nose revolver. With the Remingtons, we see good damage to our pork chop pectoral, although probably not as much as we did with the Sig Sauer. The same story with the ribs on the front of the target. There's good damage where the bullets hit the ribs, shattered them, but probably not as much damage as with the Sigs. A lot of damage to our watermelon lung tissue, although maybe not as much. And as far as the ribs on the back of the target, all the bullets went through the ribs. I don't think any actually struck a rib. And all of the projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. Let me show you a close-up of these projectiles. And we see that all of our projectiles lost their jackets, although the jackets did penetrate through to the ribs on the back of the target or to the t-shirt on the back of the target. So far we've seen that fairly high dollar 9mm ammunition is delivering some pretty good performance. But I want to shoot one more meat target. This time we'll shoot from 7 yards with our Remington green and white box 9x19 115 grain full metal jacket which, as we've seen in previous demonstrations, provides pretty good performance when fired from a full-size autoloader. Let's see how this entry-level ammunition does when fired from our snub nose revolver. Well, my apologies, we had a camera snafu, so you didn't get to see the impacts as they occurred. However, you didn't miss much. The damage to our pork steak pectoral is significantly less. The damage to our ribs on the front of the target is significantly less. The damage to our watermelon lung tissue is a lot less. All the projectiles were stopped by the t-shirt on the back of the target. But there's a reason why you're seeing so much less damage here. Let me show you a close-up of what these projectiles look like. And we see we got some expansion in one of our rounds, but in the other three the expansion was very little down to none. So to reiterate, with this ammunition, we've gotten good performance in demonstrations like this when using full-size autoloaders. But with a snub-nosed revolver, the performance was very poor. So if you're going to use a snub-nosed revolver in caliber 9x19, you can get good performance, but you do have to choose the right ammunition. So we've seen a little bit about the performance of 9x19 in a snub-nosed revolver, but now I want to talk about the performance of the LCR specifically. And I'll start with accuracy. And I want to see how the features this has, like its trigger design, its high visibility white ramp front sight, and the straight from the factory Hogue grip, help it compare for accuracy against a more conventionally designed lightweight revolver like this Smith & Wesson Model 637. So I've got two reactionary targets, and I'll shoot the one on your left with the LCR and the one on your right with the 637, and I'll shoot from 10 yards. Not much difference at 10 yards. Let's try something else. The top two targets were fired at a distance of 10 yards, while the bottom two were fired at a distance of 15 yards. And we can see that with the LCR, the group is bigger, because I was farther away. We also see that it's shifted to the right. That's partially because of me, and partially because the non-adjustable sights on my LCR hit a little bit to the right, and it starts to become visible at distances like 10 yards. 
But with the Model 637, we see that although the point of impact has shifted, the group, if anything, is better at 15 yards than it was at 10. Why? That's because the LCR is a double action only revolver, as where the 637, although double action, I was taking advantage of the fact that it can be fired in a single action mode, giving a much shorter, crisper trigger pull that can, for some people, turn into better groups. And this really starts to manifest itself at even farther distances like 25 or 50 yards. However, the non-hammer exposed double action only revolver has an advantage in that there's nothing to get caught on a pocket, while the exposed hammer spur of the 637 can. One way to remedy that is with something like this Model 638 with its shrouded hammer. Now this is a double action revolver, but it has a hammer that I can cock and shoot it in single action mode. But because of the shroud, it won't get caught on my pocket. Now this type of revolver does have two disadvantages in that the hammer can be hard to reach and can be hard to cock for some people. And two, a lot of people don't like this design because it's funny looking. So how well will the LCR stack up against something like the Smith & Wesson Model 638 for speed and accuracy when I shoot from seven yards and I put a reload in the drill comparing the moon clip to a conventional speed loader? Let's put that to the test and I'll start with the 638. Let's take a closer look at the target. I fired 10 shots for a total possible of 50, and in this case the score was 50. So let me paste up these shot holes, and then we'll repeat this drill with the LCR. And now the LCR. Let's take a closer look. Again, I fired 10 shots. Again, the total possible was 50, and the score was 50. You'll notice the group's a little lower on the target. That was intentional. I didn't want to shoot through the first group and knock off any of the pasties I'd put on there. In this case, we see the group is a little bigger, but the accuracy is still well within acceptable limits for what the gun is designed for. Now there's one more subject I have to cover, and I promise this will be the last one, and I'll try to be brief, and that's the subject of crimp jump. Crimp jump. Now what that is, is when you have a revolver that's chambered in a caliber that would typically be an auto-loading caliber, like 9x19, and you have those rounds in the cylinder, when a round is not the first one to go off, it's the third, fourth, fifth one to go off, that projectile in that casing, as the gun and the casing are experiencing recoil and being pushed back, that it can cause super eruption of that projectile. Well, I can tell you that in all the shots I fired preparing for today's presentation, and all the shots I fired during today's presentation, I have had zero problems caused by that, and I haven't seen any evidence of it. So I'll try to find some evidence of it. Now, I've got my LCR loaded with five rounds, and the one that's set to come up last, I have marked. So I'll fire the first four shots, and then we'll inspect that round for any evidence of crimp jump. Let's take a look. And I don't see any evidence of it. So I'll reload this, keeping this one round, and I'll cycle that same round through there again without shooting it, and see if we can force some crimp jump. So now I have that same round in the gun, and four new rounds, and I've got the saved round set so it will again come up last. So let's shoot this. And what I can see is that projectile has super erupted by about a millimeter. Now let's load this again, saving this one round, and do this process again. So again, I have four new rounds and that same round set so it will come up last. And 
it's still super erupted by about a millimeter. So what we see is super eruption can occur and without any question some types of ammunition would be more susceptible to it than others. But you gotta think how often are you going to shoot for, save one, put that one back in, shoot for more, save the same one? Probably not very often. So does crimp jump exist? Yes. Is it really going to be a problem if you have very poor quality ammo? Maybe. If you like to do a Barney Fife thing and continually save one bullet? Probably. But for regular shooting? No, I don't think it will. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, we saw that 9x19 is significantly more powerful than 38 Special Plus P. We also saw that not all 9x19 and not all 9x19 Plus P are created equal. And although some can give you good performance in the snub nose revolver, some 9mm ammunition, although it delivers good performance in a full-size auto, does not work very well in a snub nose revolver. Now, in terms of accuracy, the LCR's trigger pull that's supposed to alleviate trigger stacking didn't help me shoot any better. And the ability to cock a hammer and have the very short trigger pull of single action does help some people in some situations shoot a little bit better. Now as far as the speed drill, we saw that the LCR was a little bit faster. And although it delivered accuracy that I would consider well within acceptable limits, it still wasn't quite as good as the Model 638. And part of the reason that the LCR was a little bit faster was the reload. Reloading with a moon clip can be a little bit faster and a little bit easier than with a speed loader. But the main thing I'm seeing here is that I think to develop a certain level of competence in reloading with a moon clip would require a lot less practice than having an equal level of competence reloading with a speed loader. There's also the matter that although 9mm is more powerful than 38, the ammunition is significantly smaller. And a moon clip is a lot smaller than a speed loader. So depending on how you dress and how you carry your ammunition, having this in your pocket could be a lot easier than this. However, using a revolver that loads with moon clips, in terms of reloading, you're kind of in an all or none situation. While a more conventional revolver, you might shoot a shot or two, and then you can pull out those casings, and with loose ammunition, just top off load. And for some situations and some people, that can be a real advantage. There's also the matter, and I have to say it, this gun just fits my hand better than this one does. So what's the real bottom line of all of this? Is the LCR the right snub nose revolver for me? No, but I can see why it would be the right snub nose revolver for a lot of people. And no one can judge what's right for you except you. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Ruger LCR video.